Hey, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be my top 10 stocks as we head into Friday, December 3rd. This will be a technical analysis breakdown. So if you are somebody that uses charts within your trading, or maybe you're just interested in learning more about the tool of charts and how they can be used to make good decisions as a trader, then this will be a video for you. And before I get started, I do want to personally invite you to get signed up for this free live online class if you like what you see as I go through the video. So if you're seeing the power of this tool and want to learn more about it and how to use it to build consistency as a trader, then I am offering a free class actually this evening. So depending on when you watch this, uh, maybe you might have already missed it. So if you're watching this on Friday, yes, you missed it. Or maybe it, it's just too last minute because I understand uh, people have schedules. But point here being, it will be recorded. So if you're interested in still seeing the presentation after it's been recorded and uploaded, then drop me an email, clay at claytrader.com and I'd be happy to send that to you after things get uploaded. So just keep that in the back of your mind. If you are able to make it live, then in the description box down below, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a link to click on. If you're watching at my site, then somewhere right on the webpage there, there's gonna be an area for you to click on to get signed up. Uh, but again, if you can't make it because either you missed it or it's just too last second for you, definitely drop me an email. Now, first off, before I get to the stocks, a couple of clarification points. First off, I'll be using the 30 minute time frame. So if you are new, what I mean is that each one of these candlesticks, as they're called, represents 30 minutes worth of time. Second, the market is still open for a little while. So you're not crazy. As I go through, you're gonna notice that final candle is still gonna be moving around. And I like to do this because sometimes we can capture some really interesting price action uh, live as the video plays out. But the market is also close enough to closing uh, where the levels that I talk about are still gonna be relevant here going into Friday. But first one here, ticker symbol ARDX. Did this one yesterday and talked about how, yeah, things were looking bad, things were looking bad, but you never quite know. And I mean, check this move out. Absolutely monster move back in the upwards direction. So that's why you never quite want to give up on things. Uh, but overall, point here being, there's going to be plenty of people still watching this one, I'm sure, on Friday. So I want to map out a couple of the a uh, couple of the key new points here. First level from the resistance side of things. Whoops, let's change that. There we go. It's going to be nothing fancy here. Just simply word of the party finally stopped today. And that was right up there at $1.80. So $1.80 going to be that initial area right there uh, where if the price can recover back up to that level, uh, then that's going to be an area that a lot of people are watching just simply because that would be a new high. So nothing fancy behind that logic at all. Uh, but sometimes that's the best way to go about it because if a bunch of people are watching the same area, wondering the same thing, you know, call it a self-fulfilling prophecy, call it whatever you want. It can produce some very dy dynamic movements. And that's what $1.80 is representing. Uh, if you are somebody that likes to play pullbacks a bit more than the interesting pullback level, at least in my opinion, gonna be right down there around the $1.45 mark. Because even if the price were to come down to $1.45, I mean, from an overarching standpoint, you'd still have a set of lows there, you'd have a set of lows there, you'd have those lows down there. And if you envision those as stair steps, again, from a bigger picture standpoint, you'd still have a very clear trend in the upwards direction. So keep an eye on these couple levels, but yeah, all in all, very, very impressive day to day. Next one, P-H-U-N, and this is all very straightforward. And it's just a, a matter of, okay, big movement up past couple day and a half. And then you had this relatively big pullback. But what's interesting about the pullback is the price has now started to go sideways very clearly and has formed this channel here. Now that doesn't mean that this pullback is gonna for sure recover. There are no guarantees. But my point here is it now becomes a valid question to start to think, okay, maybe this pullback is over. Maybe the bulls are gonna start to show some signs of strength here. So the key level here that makes a lot of sense, at least in my mind, to watch from a potential reversal type area, right up there around the $3.60 mark. Now, again, to be very clear, just because the price gets up to 360 and breaks above, it doesn't mean guaranteed this thing's reversing back up and going over $4. But does it become a little bit more valid to think that way at that point? Absolutely, because that would prove that the price is broken out of the sideways channel and then continue to show signs of strength. So definitely keep an eye on that 360 mark as far as the bottom of the channel and therefore kind of this area of support. You can see several times today the price has bounced right off that 335 mark. So keep an eye on that. Uh, or if you're somebody that likes to play gap closes, then actually at this point, not that far away would be the gap close down there right around the 325 mark. So a couple of different choices there from the pullback standpoint. But all in all, the main premise here being very interesting setup given the sideways nature of this movement after a big surge upwards and then this pullback. So we'll see if this is indeed some sort of final consolidation period before another move back upwards. Next one here, AMC. And all in all, I would consider this a good solid day, uh, which may sound crazy, but you got to think about the context of things. And the context was at one point, this thing had gotten up that high during the opening 30 minutes and then completely collapsed all the way back down there. But you notice what happened after it hit that point, all of a sudden it started to bounce back in the upward direction. Now, yes, from an overarching standpoint, there's still a whole lot of work that needs to be done, but just considering how bad things were and then how nice of a bounce this had, it at least makes it a more sense to say, okay, maybe the bulls are back. Maybe the bulls are trying to build a little bit of momentum, but I'm not con personally convinced of anything until the price can at least get up to that purple line, which is the 50 period moving average, and not only get up to it, 
but break above it and stay above it. So currently the main area of resistance is going to be right up there around that $33 mark. So keep an eye on that. Again, definitely a good start, right? Any sort of reversal has got to start somewhere. So yes, it did bounce today, but the big question, that's still a very valid question of, yeah, bounce, but is this a dead cat bounce? You know, is it about to just roll back over, which is a, a very realistic possibility, but you got, you know, that's a two-sided coin because the other side of the coin is, or maybe this is the start of a bigger move that's going to try to, you know, work back in the upwards direction. So keep an eye on AMC and we'll see if this is indeed the start of something bigger or not. Next one, NIO, very popular stock out there and got absolutely beat down today quite a bit. Yeah, it did bounce. However, you got to keep in mind with this bounce, it's formed this channel right here, but when you factor in the downwards momentum move right here, from a pattern perspective, this would be known as a bear flag pattern. Now, let me be very clear. Just because there's a bearish pattern doesn't mean that for sure guaranteed the price is going to continue on down. Just like if there's a bullish pattern doesn't mean that a price is for sure going to go up. The same applies to the downside. My core point here is, yes, it, it has bounced, but it is still in a very bearish context. Uh, you know, So don't go grab your kid's college tuition money and throw everything in there because, oh, look, it's bouncing. It's time to reverse. No, this is just the bounce. Now, can a bounce eventually turn into a reversal? Absolutely. But this could very, very realistically still just be a dead cat bounce where the price rolls back over, which, as you saw previously, would be, uh, you know, just a confirmation and breakdown of that bear flag pattern. So, yeah, bear flag pattern right now. Uh, but you got to give some credit credits too. the price did bounce. I'm just saying don't go all in, you know, be a little skeptical of the bounce, because as of right now, there's there's been plenty of failed bounces below. Right there, failed bounce. Right there, failed bounce. Doesn't mean that it'll for sure happen again, but it won't be the first time. Next one, BFRI, and this will mean a little bit more to those of you that have watched past videos that I've done on this one, but the key dynamic here, which serves as just a great real life example too on the power of charts, but there is a level here that I put, put into play, this green line at 660 in a previous video, and there's a foundational rule in charting which states when levels of support are broken and closed below, they tend to act as resistance. So you can see right there, the price did break down below that area. So at that point in time, you would expect this and the rule says, you know, that would act as resistance. And I mean, you can't make this stuff up. Check it out today where that big old bounce got rejected right at that red line. That's crazy and just goes again to show the power of charts. But that also now makes a very well-defined area, meaning I'm not the only person that's noticed that. So going back to the whole idea of self-fulfilling prophecies, I assure you a bunch of people have noticed that level and if the price can get back up there, they're going to be wondering, okay, can the price finally break through that level? Because that would be a key breakout point. And if it does break through that level, then at that point, it's valid to think, okay, that could create additional upside buying pressure. So point here being 660 remains a very, very interesting, very important level from the breakout standpoint. As far as supports are concerned, and again, a, a classic example here of the power of charts, I guess didn't hit it exactly, but that pink line there represents a very well-known, very famous moving average, the 200 period moving average. And like I said, sure, didn't hit it exactly, but hopefully we can all agree, got in the general vicinity of it and then bounce. So if the price does pull back some more, then I'd keep a very close eye on right around $4.15, which is the current value of that 200 period moving average. But those are definitely the two key technical levels to watch moving forward. Next one, LCID. And again, this will mean a little bit more to those of you that watched the previous uh, top 10 videos. But for those of you that have, I put that tread line in play. And in yesterday's video, I was talking about how the price was sitting right at that tread line, but what did it want to do? And you can see today, ultimately broke down below the tread line. And that really spurred on quite a bit of downwards pressure. Again, like the other stocks, it's bounced here a little bit, but it, all it's really done here is created a bear flag pattern. But the idea here is that, yeah, there is certainly a lot of downwards pressure. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of these lines as they've served their purpose now. But the key level of resistance here, and again, just based on the rule I've been talking about, that pink line there was an area of support, but now that it's broken down below, you'd expect it to act as resistance. So if this bounce continues, next key level to watch very closely is going to be right up there. At, let's just call it the $50 mark. So $50 is going to be the near-term resistance on LCID. As far as supports are concerned, nothing fancy here. Just literally a question of, okay, where did the bleeding finally stop today? And that was down there at $46. So $46, key area of support. $50, key area of resistance. And let's see if this bounce can actually gain some more momentum or not. Next one, PLTR, and it's been a while since I've done this one, so updates certainly need to be made, and that's where these annotations are coming from. Just doing some house cleaning there. And once again, I'm gonna go very quickly because you've heard this before, but 2020 was the area of support, but now that the price broke below it, that would now be considered, say it with me, a level of resistance. And like the other stocks, nice little bounce here is forming. So does this bounce continue? Well, if it does, the big old next big question mark is, okay, well, how does the price behave up around $20.20? So keep an eye on that as that main area of resistance. And you also have that purple line there just almost coincidentally getting right around that same area. So that could definitely be a pretty big level because you can see right there, purple line, again, the 50 period moving average, classic example of that turning into resistance and pushing the price back downwards. If the price does come back down, 
well, then you know a level that a lot of bounce players and a lot of shorts are going to be watching right down there around $19.15 to give the Bulls credit. They did a great job of, you know, building a fortress right at that area and never let the Bears make any further progress. However, it makes sense from both sides of the coin for bounce players to think that it could come down there and bounce off. But it also makes sense for shorts to say, well, if it doesn't bounce, then that could definitely create a whole lot of downward selling pressure. So a lot of shorts certainly going to be watching that level. But those are going to be the two main areas to watch on Friday. Next one, AUPH. And this one's on here for a very simple reason. Big volume, and it's now formed a very, very nice, well-defined pattern, which goes back to the self-fulfilling prophecy attribute of things. I'm not proclaiming that this, some, this pattern is a great discovery, and this is some sort of special skill I have. No, a lot of people have done what I'm going to do here. A lot of people have drawn that resistance tread line right there. They've done something very similar like this, and they're putting this tread line down there somewhere around there. Maybe not the exact spot, but generally speaking, because the support part's not the most important area of this. And then just to keep an, uh, or keep maybe the easier to see, let's just make this all the same color. So there's a resistance, there's a support, there's a momentum move. And now we have ourselves not a bear flag pattern, but a bull flag pattern. And I, you know, I would say that that level is not as important because the main level and the main people are, that are going to be watching this are those breakout players. And the breakout players are going to be wondering, can the price recover back upwards, get to the top part of the trend line, and then get the break up through it? So that is a very interesting pattern. And for those people that like to play breakouts and you know just technical patterns in general, this one definitely belongs on the watch list because you can't get a better, more well-defined bull flag than right here. So we'll see what happens with it on Friday. Next one, TSLA Tesla. And this one really had a rough day today. Talked about that 1120 mark in the previous video. And yes, the price did come down there, break down below it. Uh, and that really, you know, just generated that much more downside and selling pressure. And now we have the reverse side of things. I think there's going to be a lot of shorts watching this and they're going to, and rightfully so, because you have a, a nice, well-defined pattern just on the short side of things. So once again, there's that area of support, change that to green, and then you have the area of resistance right up here at 1100. And let's just make this all the same color. So again, have support, have resistance, have the big downwards momentum move, and this would be a bear pennant pattern. So again, same talking points, just because it's bearish does not mean that for sure guaranteed the price is gonna go downwards. But would it be shocking to see the price get continuation in the downwards direction? Absolutely not uh, with the given you know, the pattern here that has formed. So a bear pennant here on Tesla, but it is Tesla. So that's why if you are thinking of playing puts or going short, you always want to be disciplined because you never know if Tesla just all of a sudden just decides to say, hey, I'm Tesla and then skyrocket back to the upside. So, I mean, any stock or any asset that you're trading, risk management is important, but especially with Tesla because you never quite know what can happen with it. Uh, but, you know, I would definitely be bearish biased headed into Friday because of this bear pennant pattern. But again, that doesn't guarantee anything. So risk management matters. And then I wanted to end on SPY, just the overall markets, because, yeah, we'll, we'll give the markets credit where credit's due. Nasty move down and has now started to bounce. But is this a true bounce? Is this, you know, any sort of genuine bounce? Well, if it is a genuine bounce, if it does have true power, well, then it's, it's going to show signs of progress. Now, I get it. Me just saying signs of progress are just words, but that's why I love charts. They allow you to take words and then make them very visual. So when I say show signs of progress, what I'm referring to is $454. And I'm not saying this will occur, but for example, sake, if the price comes down to that area and then just hovers around it, what would that still be telling us about this current bounce? Well, it would tell us that it's got a set of lows right there where when you compare it with that one and then envision those as stair steps, it would actually still be making progress in the upwards direction. And again, that's what truly strong bounces do. So if this is a truly strong bounce, if the market is actually experiencing a genuine bullish bounce, let's see if it can make progress. And again, progress being defined as staying above at least 454. So keep an eye on that. As far as areas of resistance are concerned, the overarching level in my mind now becomes all about that pink line, 200 period moving average. You can see a couple of times, generally speaking, the price has gotten up around, again, the general area, and it's just rolled back over. So if this bounce does continue, I'll be very curious to see how the price behaves up around that area. But yeah, very nice bounce today. Is it actually genuinely strong? Let's keep an eye on 454. So that wraps up the top 10. Again, if you like what you saw here and you can see the power uh, of this tool of technical analysis and want to learn more about it and how to build consistency with it, then definitely get signed up for the free class. Or like I said, if it's too last minute or if you're watching this on Friday morning, then it you know will be uploaded and uh, recorded. So just drop me an email, clay at claytrader.com, and I would be happy to email that to you. And then as far as these top 10 videos are concerned, if you enjoy this format, if you would like for me to continue to make videos like this, then please communicate that to me by hitting that like button and leaving a basic comment. Even if it's just telling me, 
saying hi, a ticker symbol that you traded today, a, a unicorn emoji, but hitting the like button, leaving a simple comment communicates to me that you enjoy the videos. And as long as I know people are enjoying, then I will continue to put in the time and effort to make these videos. And again, if you want to learn more about the tool and how to build consistency with it, then get signed up for the free class or just drop me an email if you're not able to quite make it.